uh, Hermann Morgenbesser and I am very happy to be in the Scientix team now for about 10 years. And uh, that uh, thank you very much to the team that coached me. Thank you much to Agata. I think she's here for the last 10 years. And uh, let me start up uh, with the, the way from, let's say, totally local to totally global in case of STEAM in Austria. I'm working at the Future Learning Lab Vienna, which is, uh, I found five years ago, uh, following the rules of uh, European Schoolnet, you know, the partners of uh, the European labs. And uh, in that case, uh, we were starting to uh, follow the STEAM uh, track uh, years ago, uh, together with about 50 schools all over the biggest district in Vienna, which is Favoriten. And all these 50 schools uh, were coming in into our uh, projects, into our network, um, following us in case of learning by making. Uh, I hope you can uh, get the uh, screen now for the player. I don't uh, play it with music. I will talk to that. Oh, let's see, maybe some back music. So what we were doing is we were creating uh, this uh, laser cutting, plotting, 3D printing, and um, some other stuff in case of stitching uh, with about uh, 40 teachers at the beginning uh, with the idea of a 1K, 1,000 euro makerspace, which now is called Edu Makerspace. We are coaching students from the age of uh, 7 to 15 in that project. As you can see, we did it during the pandemic uh, situation. And the main idea was to use makerspaces for getting the bridge uh, between at the one end uh, the uh, STEM uh, idea and at the other end uh, the idea of um, the arts bringing uh, them into uh, STEM technology. So let me go back uh, to the uh, sorry uh, to the presentation. Uh, so what we did is uh, we were creating learning scenarios on our uh, workshops. Um, I just uh, let me show uh, who's one of our partners in that case. We were working together uh, with uh, technology kids. Uh, so we were taking on at the beginning uh, the level of different uh, experiences, kids doing uh, workshops uh, on the scratch. Uh, and this cooperation, um, which is um, now finished by one of these ladies working for us, uh, was uh, leading into learning scenarios. Uh, in case of learning scenarios, we follow the rules again of European Schoolnet. Uh, this scenario is taken from a project we had last year, uh, together with the Turkish, uh, Spanish, Portuguese, Belgium, uh, and uh, Czech uh, a group of uh, teachers. So the idea is uh, to start um, the STEAM projects from two different points of view. The one, we had one uh, scientific teacher in our team and in parallel running one of these arts teachers and both of them were coaching uh, the students. Uh, the uh, making sessions, let's call it this way to begin, we're going into the challenges of uh, trading prototypes uh, and at the other end leading into digital storytelling, which was something like performance. Um, I'd, I'd like to add that uh, we have a media room and a, and a makerspace in our institution, so it's an easy job for us to bring them in. And at the other end, we coach them with mobile makerspaces in schools. So all in all, they have a, a good uh, basics uh, to use technology, and we don't really focus on uh, technology in our uh, project. So this was uh, what we were starting uh, in the local area, just one sentence on where we learned our European lessons. This was this interactive classroom work group that was led uh, from 2013 to 18 into the idea of makerspaces. So if you want to get some details how these guidelines uh, um, should work, uh, have a look on that. Uh, you'll find it on the Future Classroom Lab page. Uh, and it's called the makerspace in school. So after that, uh, next step we had to do is uh, to uh, go, let's say, uh, to find new partners because our project was just now uh, working in-house. I'm working at the Pedagogical University uh, with teachers from in-house uh, 
But our next steps um, must, let's say this way, go into European level. And for that, we were uh, watching for um, cooperative partners. And uh, we redesigned this project uh, and uh, starting now into the second level after having uh, finalized these workshops with teachers, having done, I, I think, about 50 workshops, having created about 20 different learning scenarios. Uh, we were ready to find uh, new partners. Uh, before I show them, uh, we had good luck with the Technical University of Vienna, with the head of the Technical University of Vienna, because this idea of bringing in uh, girls into STEM, or let's say uh, people into technology, uh, is a main idea of the, uh, at the moment, head of uh, the Austrian Technical University, Ms. Seidler. So uh, we tried to uh, get a budget, we tried to get cooperation, and it worked, um, even in times where uh, the money is not so big. So we got the idea of doing a five years project, which is very, very nice uh, to get uh, in. So I will now start the Cultural Coalition starting page uh, from the Technical University of Vienna, which is the main institution, uh, deriving, let's say, the standard, doing a master's study study on that uh, with about 40 students. And these collisions, as you can see in this main starting page, uh, is on my uh, presentation even, uh, is uh, a, a try to pick up girls in a very early phase of uh, coaching, of uh, learning. Um, the ta target group at the moment uh, we are addressing, I will go back then to the presentation in a few minutes, is between 12 and 14. And this project will lead about five years, which means that uh, we are working with about 200 classrooms all of Austria and hope so uh, it will uh, extend, let's say, to the neighborhood of Austria, northern, eastern and southern, um, which um, focuses, I mean, this group uh, uh, gears for people uh, in case of climate change at the moment, which is uh, the actual, uh, let's say, um, appetizer. Uh, but it is working now for uh, this year for uh, being a pilot in case of citizen buildings. So the idea is uh, just to make a focus of what happens. We are meeting then teachers um, in the pilot group of about 10 schools this year uh, from uh, schools that are uh, yes having a lot of immigrants. So we try to find uh, the basis, let's say, of uh, getting uh, students into technology, not just the evaluated schools, not just the other schools that also have a lot of budget for different things. And starting with buildings and cities will be our first step, uh, leading then into school year, as you can see in the presentation, uh, to energy, then to production and technologies, resources and materials, and e-mobility then in 2027, 20, where we hope that we can watch them cars on the road. Uh, so the cooperation partners uh, in that um, um, area are, and I go back to the presentation again, uh, two big institutions. Uh, the one is Museum of Arts in Vienna, uh, and in details, the Creative Learning uh, Lab, which is leaded by Mr. Hochwartner. So what they do is uh, they are offering uh, different workshops for schools, um, they are also deriving workshops in analog style. It's not just digital, but in that case, we are creating something like a scratch lab. You could see it if you would have a look on it, what students are doing at the moment uh, with Ms., uh, Mr. Uh, Hochwartner is to create um, artifacts that are based on uh, digital elements, but the Museum of Modern Arts also has a big collection and uh, so it doesn't just go into arts in technology it focuses on all arts this is the one part and the other part uh, we will address uh, is uh, the technical museum in uh, vienna of science and technology uh, this tech lab is also based um, on maker spaces so they drive uh, as one part of the exhibition a maker space where students can go and uh, address different ways of steam areas there is the 3d printing corner there is the coding for beginners there's the artificial intelligence i will lead to that at the end of my presentation um, and uh, you can focus uh, what's on these uh, workshops so um, 
to go to the uh, or, or prolonging our our ideas we will go to these schools picking up two teachers one from uh, the area of arts the other one from the area of steam uh, bringing them together into workshops so one a uh, three hours workshop uh, at this uh, technical lab here and the other one at the technical lab, uh, uh, let's say the, the uh, creative learning lab at the Museum of Mumak. Uh, and after that, uh, students uh, uh, are, yes, uh, please, let's say, uh, we hope so that they uh, give back information to go to the outcome and I'll change into um, the uh, story of uh, this uh, cultural collisions. They were started years ago by Mr. Ho, who is teaching at the CERN, you know, this uh, uh, Geneva Institute for uh, Physics. And uh, Mr. Ho, who is uh, one of uh, our partners in you know, our network, we are lucky about that, his teacher there, and he's creating different exhibitions all over the world. You see what they did uh, the last years in uh, Bodgaritsa, in Delhi, Seoul, Athen, Prague, and this year in Oman. Uh, so the idea is uh, to come uh, at the end to something like an exhibition. Um, this exhibition is um, at the beginning a part of the project, but it leads into students' work. The idea is that students create, um, as I said before, stories, create maybe artifacts, prototypes, and uh, at the end, in June every year, we have a big exhibition at the museum of modern arts, where we are placing uh, this um, information. So um, three days open house in the Mod Museum of Modern Arts, uh, which is a very, uh, let's say, lucky situation for us. Let me have a look to the time scale. Um, we are usually this uh, year, we are starting at uh, in next week, uh, 2nd of uh, September, with the teachers in the pilot. Uh, then we are preparing them, uh, I just will translate it, um, in February, we are going to do both institutions with teachers. In March, April, and May, we have the workshops in at the one, at the one end at the Technical Museum and the other end at MUMOC with students. Uh, and uh, it leads in June, end of June, in a three days session. We are starting at the Technical University. So what's the goal of the Technical University? They are just uh, creating uh, studies, uh, cre creating a master study uh, with uh, going into collisions, let's say. It's not just for the students of architecture. It's also, uh, let's say, an interface yeah, that uh, will try uh, to open the space of technical university. And uh, climate change is another, and I mean, I don't follow this track now. Everybody knows that this will be a main idea. So all in all, this will lead into more students, Mint, the Austrian way of uh, STEAM, or STEM in that case, plus the A, you know, we are a bit unhappy about the A. It's, it's, it should be more than an A, you know, but at the moment we are happy with the symbol. So uh, this is more or less to, to work with innovation, creativity, uh, uh, leading into technology. This is the goal uh, we will work with, and uh, we want to open the space uh, to uh, students for uh, being uh, successful in uh, studies later and uh, the thing is working for uh, five years uh, we will have a look very careful uh, if we get more students into technology having had this experience for one year so um, to round up uh, it, it will be a five years project uh, FLL Vienna is responsible for teachers training for students workshops around uh, these uh, ideas. I want to stop here. Uh, in that case, if you are interested, have a look on collisions and follow us the next years. Um, I'd like to lead into the next step of STEAM, uh, a very successful project, well known to all people from European school net in case of EdTech. Um, there was this Ed Impact uh, project last year, and we were in the lucky situation. I was in the lucky situation as a mentor to coach Kobe. AI, uh, this seems to be the German version. I take the English one. Uh, so what we do now is we are bringing in uh, the idea of being coached by artificial intelligence in coding at the first begin, because as you have seen, making and coding goes together because what we are creating as a prototype at the moment comes out of 
uh, Scratch, Snap, and other coding strategies. The next way is to help teachers uh, to get assistance uh, with a valuable uh, outcome, the smart classroom. That means that we are uh, in, uh, introducing artificial technology to help students to create their own programs. Uh, working languages will be Python, HTML, and some others. We are very flexible. So the Kobe brothers, I call them, this is Marco, uh, Miha, and then Thomas Schirmann, were very successful in the European level. I don't want to try this. But what we can do now is uh, we have an excellent possibility for teachers to be structured in following students uh, to code and to find creative solutions. If you are teaching about 15 to 20 students at the same time, uh, this is not an easy job, um, I would say, for uh, this uh, science and technology. And at the other end, I now stop the uh, um, presentation for uh, the um, uh, teaching of creative solutions. As, as I've said before, we are addressing uh, students and teachers um, in a case of all this um, um, stuff of being innovative with coding. This is a very new way of uh, going into science and into STEM. Uh, so we hope that uh, we can motivate students to be artists, uh, even if they lead like Mr. Hoch in CERN, he is working with this physics, electronics, things like that, and creating, uh, as he calls, the wings of Icarus, maybe you have a look at that, which will be a connection reminding us, teachers, that science and technology was starting long, long before 1492. So thanks a lot from my side, from the presentation.